Will Union's dagger ever be used? We're talking about Union here. Obviously, never. <laughs> She's too nice. And because of that, she has to be tortured in this world by having absolutely no friends. Episode 3 started with the latest challenge between Union and Megami, who's the more compact girl. And Megami easily wins and does her celebratory combo move against Union. We then switch to the library. Union's reading a book on how to meet friends, and Megami's trying to find the latest in her novel series on romance. Union should find out how to make friends with fish or plants. This world always makes sure that Union has to be the butt of the joke, doesn't it? I love the fact that Megamine, Dodonko, and Furry Fona all suggest that she should basically be, be their friend. In fact, I love it when Dodonko and Furry Fona actually propose it and Union immediately accepts it as if she's joining a party for adventuring. She begs that she will be an asset to the D. I even love the face she does at the moment the offer is given, her nodding. There's something about it just brings me a lot of joy watching this. And then the perv in the hall has shown off his latest magic, teleportation magic. Bukurori is his name. And he's after the latest waifu the Crimson Demons have to offer, Saketo. My favorite part is that everyone calls him a neat and lazy, especially Megamine. Well, Megamine, I got one little piece of news to you. Cosma is worse than Bukurori. <laughs> Take those rose-colored glasses off. He's lazy. He's a perv. I'm sure he would stalk someone. He steals your underwear all the time. And now Bukurori goes on how he has mastered his new magic. And of course the girls immediately say, look, let's bury him in books. After putting away the books, Bukurori begs Union and Megamine to help him out. And what does he do? He goes out into the middle of the forest, noticing Saketo working out. He immediately decides he's going to go invisible with reflection magic. And what's the first thing he do when he starts crawling around like a Navy SEAL? Of course, he's trying to get an upskirt. It's a problem when you deal with neats. <laughs> All neats in anime are usually perfs for some reason. Desperate, too. And, of course, Saketo is not fooled in a lace bit and basically picks him out. He immediately gets up. I also love the fact that before that, Megumin's plan is basically to have Union put on a mask and try attacking Saketo. And the funny part about it, she only has a mask on. You can easily see that the clothes she's wearing is that of a 15-year-old girl. I'm sorry, 13 in the show. And then, of course, the group is attacked by One Punch Bears and leads to my next great moment. When Bukurori powers up and does Inferno Magic! Burning the One Punch Bears. And sending the lovey Saketo up into the flames. And she immediately comes back extremely pissed. Now Saketo, ironically, is a pure fortune teller. Saketo's predictions, by the way, are always right. Unless they're to her. At that point, she can't see anything. And the heartbreak that Mr. Bukurori faces. Reminds me a lot of Kazuma. Episode closes with Union and Megamine discussing... Would they ever actually want to meet someone after school is over? Well, this episode three is done. This, once again, is a pretty strong and funny episode. Some really funny scenes. I really love Bukurori. <laughs> this guy is such an incompetent boob that I couldn't possibly tell you how much joy he does in his failure. <laughs> he brings me. And it's pretty funny because uh, the show is about a... Neat loser in Cosmo Sato. As you know, episode four is currently waiting for me to watch it. I do love the way how this episode presented itself. It's very funny. A lot of great scenes. And it's time for me to watch episode four. So, for now, bye.